Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Danielle with Damn Fancy Creations and today I am going to be showing you how I make these cute self-defense keychains. I think they are adorable. You can add them to your keys, to your purse, um, to your kids' backpacks and they serve a purpose. So if you ever get into trouble, um, they have like finger holes for you and you can defend yourself if anybody tries to get you or rob you or anything like that. Hopefully not, but you can never be too prepared. Um, I will warn you guys that some states classify these as brass knuckles, so just be aware that you may not be able to sell them in your state, or if you're sending them to school with your kids, just be aware that they may be classified differently in different states. Here in Georgia, brass knuckles are legal, so it's not a problem even if they are classified as brass knuckles. But anyway, we're gonna show you guys how to make them, how to add different colors, how to detail them. I just think they're really fun. So if you guys are ready to see how I make them, let's get started. So the first thing you're going to do is spray your molds with a mold release and we're going to use pink mica and some inks. So I always use mold release um, because it really helps the molds last longer. You're not going to get epoxy sticking to the sides of it or anything like that. I also use facet in my molds and I use a torch and I don't have a problem with my epoxy sticking to the sides. So for this cat, we're just doing clear epoxy, and then I add some clear epoxy to the indentions in the dog. I had an idea for the cat that I was going to drop inks into the epoxy, and the white ink was going to push it down, but I think that the facet was a little bit too thick for this idea. I've done it several other times with thinner epoxy. It just did not work out too well this time. Live and learn, so we're just going to ignore the clear epoxy for now. And you guys will see that this is going to be layer one. So I'm mixing pink mica in with my epoxy, and I am just going to pour it basically in between the different sections of the molds. And if you have any little indentions um, that are like really close together, I always push my popsicle stick down in between there just to kind of force any air bubbles out that may be trapped because you don't want a huge air bubble trapped in between the tiny little pieces and then you may have pieces of your mold missing when you go to demold them. And I just use my popsicle stick to bring the epoxy as close to the edge as I can, trying not to go over the little dividers. So I always start with just a little bit and if I need to add more then I can, but you guys know that epoxy spreads pretty well, so it really just takes a little bit to fill in the little sections. And on some of them, you guys can see like the little owl, he has a lot of little tiny sections where his wings are. And I just take a little dot of epoxy and just kind of smear it into those little sections. Just to make sure that the epoxy gets down in there. And this is pretty much it for layer one. I will hit this with my torch a couple times just to make sure that I get all the bubbles out. And then once this is cured, we will come back and do layer two. 
And if you guys do not have a big torch like the CC DIY torch, I highly suggest you get it. I love it. Ever since I got it, I will never go back to the little tiny um, butane torch that I was using before. And I also like to use a toothpick too, just to get little air bubbles out that may be trapped. This is a good tip that I like to use. So now that layer one is cured, we are ready to pour layer two. So for these keychains, I just decided to do a pink and white color scheme. So I am just mixing some white pearl mica in clear epoxy. And I like to just pour them in my molds. I like to get a thin stream going. That way I'm not just globbing epoxy into my molds because I don't want it to overflow on the edges. And just like with the first layer, if you have any tiny little spaces that you need to fill, I like to do them first and just jam my popsicle stick in there um, just to help release some of the air that may be trapped in there so your mold is not missing pieces when you go to demold them. And again, just use your popsicle stick to bring the epoxy to the edge if you need to. And once you get them filled up, we're going to hit them with our torch and then we'll be ready to demold them and detail them. So these are the molds that I just demolded, the pink and white ones. And I like to detail them with really skinny paint pens or paint markers. I like to just kind of put my marker in between the indentions and just follow those lines to add details. I like to keep alcohol on hand in case I need to wipe away any of the paint that got on the mold that I did not want it on. So this is basically what I'm going to be doing and it may take a little longer. So instead of listening to me talk for a little bit, I am just going to play some music so you guys can watch it and enjoy.
Now, after I detail them, I will let them sit for a little bit so everything is good and dry, and then I will take them back outside and add a final layer of epoxy on top just to make sure that everything is sealed in really good and is not going to chip off down the road. So these molds were demolded a couple days ago and I went ahead and detailed them so I am 100% sure that the paint pens and paint markers are all dry so they are ready for the final layer of epoxy. So we are going to do the same thing that we did when we were molding these, which is focusing on the indentions and crevices first. That way the epoxy has time to seep down into the little crevices and the air bubbles will go ahead and start rising to the top. Once you have a decent amount of epoxy on your little keychain you are going to bring the epoxy right up to the edge with your popsicle stick. You want to be sure that you are not bringing too much to the edge so that it starts to flow over. You just want to bring it right up to the edge. And we are doing the same thing with our little pig. We are just filling his ears, his eye, his little snout, so that all of those indentions get filled really well. If you do notice a drip on the edge, be sure to wipe it away quickly because if you don't, it will create a waterfall effect and more epoxy will continue to flow where that drip is dripping, which we do not want. So we are just going to continue to spread out the epoxy with our popsicle stick and you really just need a little bit just to cover the top of it just to give it that really pretty shiny effect. And I like to work directly under an overhead light when I'm doing this. That way I can squat down easily and look at the keychains just to make sure that everything is covered really well. The light will reflect the shiny epoxy and then the not quite a shiny epoxy on the keychain already. So you're really able to tell what parts are not covered with epoxy, um, where you may need to add a little bit of epoxy just to get good coverage. But that really does help just to make sure that your entire mold is covered really nicely. And once you have all your epoxy on your molds, um, you can go ahead and hit it with a torch. And I like to hit it immediately with a torch and then I like to come back a few minutes later and hit it again with a torch just to make sure that all those air bubbles are popped since this will be our final layer of epoxy. And once these are cured, we can add our keychain hardware you can go to Etsy or Amazon and find fun little findings like tassels, little flowers. You can add bubblegum beads. There are so many different ways to dress these up and make them fun. And I cannot wait to see what you guys make with these. And I hope you really enjoyed my video. If you did, be sure to subscribe and turn on those notifications.